Hi, this is AD Boris here for CG Masters, looking at aligning together two faces from two different objects. So what exactly do I mean and why is this an exercise or challenging in any way? So what we want to do is to snap any given face on an object so that it's on top of and in alignment with any given face of another object. I'll walk you through this in a couple of minutes with a way to do this manually and I'll show you how to do this in just a few seconds with add-ons. And if you're interested in this environment for the game I've been working on, then you can find out more about it with a link that I'll throw up somewhere around this video. So let's just bring a couple of objects into view and let's say we have a pipe piece like this on the left and we want to try and align it onto a wall piece which this cube with this single face that's been scaled down can kind of stand in as our wall. Now right now this is looking pretty easy because everything's kind of aligned already but what if we were to tab into edit mode and then double tap R and then that's basically going to destroy any local orientation that any of these objects have. So now to try and align this piece with this piece is decidedly more trickier and this is the mess that we've got to try and get ourselves out of. So just in case you don't know something that you're going to need to be aware of that we can do in Blender is we can specify an axis to be able to lock down so very quickly we can go G to move and then we can press X for example to lock that movement against the X axis but what we can also do is then press X again and if you check out the header bar at the bottom there it's saying uh, a bunch of digits and then it says along global X now if we press X again we're going to toggle between along local X and so we can press X again and then that will kind of remove the axis lock altogether. If we now switch our orientation to say something like normal, it will um, press G and then X again. Again, we're going to global at first and then if we press X again, we're now along the normal X, which in this case is all going to be basically the same. But that's something that I think you're going to need to be aware of just before we start. Step one is to set the orientation. So let's press N to bring up our property sidebar, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and here we'll find our transform orientations, which is the same pull down list as you get in the header of the 3D view. Only over here we get an extra plus icon which allows us to create our own custom ones. So let's press Control Space to bring up our 3D manipulator so we can see the axes of the orientation for global coordinates at the moment. And if we select Select our pipe object, tab into edit mode, select one of the faces. This is the normal that we want to now set a new orientation that all ob objects can get access to regardless of what face or object is selected. So let's come down again, press plus, and now within this list we've got face. So if we select face, we'll see the orientation of the gizmo change there. Step two is to create a new cube and rotate it to match the orientation that we just created. So let's tap into object mode, go shift A, add in a mesh cube which is a little bit on the large side so f6 and then instead of four meters let's make it about 30 centimeters and then let's bring that into view slightly now all we need to do for this cube is to go object transform and align to transform orientation and basically what that's done is if we take a look at the rotation values it's simply rotated it so that the object is now in alignment with the axes that we had Step three is to parent the object. So let's get the pipe object and shift select the cube so that this will be the parent when we go control P and set the parent to be the object. Step four is to select this cube and we want to reset this rotation value so we can just left click and drag across those if we like and go zero and that will clear out all the rotation values there. Or we could just go alt R is the shortcut. Step five is to clear the parent. So let's select the pipe object, go Alt P to clear and keep transformation. At this point, we want to apply the rotation that we've just given it. So let's go Control A and then apply the rotation and that will zero out all those rotation values, but not adjust the position of our object. And if we switch over to local now, we can see that it should be much better aligned but it's still not quite perfect because we have these x and y axes would be maybe better if it was going along the pipe instead so let's choose another face and basically repeat those steps again so let's select let's do this a little bit faster this time select this face come down give it another orientation let's label this something a bit more meaningful this time so face side tab into object mode select our cube go object transform and then align to the transform orientation parent this to the cube control P 
clear the rotation with Alt R, clear the parent with Alt P, and keep the transformation. And now we don't need our cube anymore. We can delete that with X. And now with this object, we can go Control A and apply the rotation. And if we take a look at local axes now, we can see that it should be much better aligned. Now we're on with our next step. Basically, we want to now snap this face onto this face. So let's switch over to face snapping. Let's enable the rotation alignment when we snap. Let's set this to be closest and let's press G and then hold control and then just indicate to that face there. Let's zoom in with full stop on the numpad and it's not quite perfect. What we're going to do instead is just rotate by 90 degrees along the Y axis. So let's R, Y twice and then 90 and then enter and you can see that's basically worked a lot better now but it's not actually touching so what we'll do now is switch over to vertex snapping and let's press G and then XX and then hold control and we'll gesture to <laughs> let's switch off the rotation as well press G XX and then hold control and let's gesture to one of those vertices that happen to be on that face and now we'll see that uh, that has actually snapped onto it fine if we want to refine the position of this a little bit, what we can do is press G and then Shift X so that it isn't moving on the X axis, but we don't want the global X axis. We want the axis orientation of the local object that we've got. So let's press Shift X again, and you'll see that it snaps along the axis that we actually want. So now we can just position it, say somewhere in the middle like this, and then that's fine. And then rotate it by R, X, X again and then we could sort of position it that way as well if we like. Now something else that is helpful in, within these sorts of cases is if you want to move the origin point around so for example we could put the origin at the center of that face that we're snapping to and things like that but this is just one method of being able to bring these two objects together. So let's rewind all the way back to the start and take a look at achieving the same thing only with add-ons which we should find is actually a lot faster. So the first add-on that I'd like to take a look at is the Align by Faces add-on by Tom Rethler. Uh, I apologize if I've completely butchered your surname there. And basically, all we need to do is enable the add-on in the user preferences. And then if we select this object, the, this face on that object, and say this face on that object, and then let's select this object, then this object, and then search for it in the spacebar operator search there and just type in align by faces and then just click on that and then you can see it basically does it straight away. So thank you very much to Tom. All right, the next uh, add-on is the Precise Align by BitBarrel Media and this has a little bit more functionality to it and if we bring up our tool shelf with the T key we should be able to find our relations tab and then we can scroll down here we can find some stuff to do with the Precise Align add-on. Let's just undo that move with Control Z. So first of all, we need to set up our orientation. So let's select this face again. In fact, let's select these three vertices is what's required. And then we want to create an empty. And that empty isn't quite aligned. So I'm just going to click on the swap empty origin. And you can see that now we have two axes which are definitely in alignment with what we wanted there. And then I'm going to come over to this object and then do the same kind of thing. So we've got those three vertices selected there, create empty. In fact, let's just swap that around again. Uh, yeah, that, that's probably better. Something else that we can do with this is actually flip the vectors along these options here. If you're just really looking to try and get the right result for this empty that we can see. At this point, we just need to tab back into object mode, select the first empty. In fact, let's select this one and then shift select this one. And then what we can do is align the object's position and we can align the object's rotation. And we can see now that that's nicely aligned. In fact, if we actually just grab the parent empty of this and then just along the X axis there, just rotate X, X, uh, 180 actually we need. And that should just bring us into position just how we wanted it. So I pressed X twice there just to try and get the local axis of this empty. At that point, we can clear our parents and keep the transformations. Then we can delete the empties and then we can carry on doing whatever it is that we needed to do.
One other thing is that if we wanted to just simply align an object to the world, as we did with our cube before, that precise align add-on will enable us to do that. I'm just going to again create an empty with these three vertices selected. And then what I'm going to do is just come back into object mode. And if we take a look with the N key in the property sidebar, you can see the rotation values are currently zero. If we want to just come over to the align local transformation and set that to rotation, you can see that this has now altered that. In fact, let's switch that back over to Euler. And then uh, what we can do again is just clear the parent, Alt P, clear and keep transformations, and just delete that empty. And then we can find that that has uh, been realigned. In fact, if we go Alt R, you can kind of see that it's aligned it to the world in that orientation, but we can just keep it into position where it is. So that's all for now. I hope you've found that of use and with a little bit of practice and a little bit of time just to absorb exactly what's happening there, that it just doesn't seem too daunting and you can get on with the hopefully now more agreeable business of aligning when you really, really need to. All right. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you next time.